In front of me, I have the NAD or the NAD M10 V2 and the Arcam SA30. And these stream and amplifiers look completely different, but they have quite a lot in common. And one of the features that they share is Dirac Live, a digital room correction system. And I will be review comparing these stream and amplifiers to see which one is the best or maybe which one offers the best value. And I thought it could be useful before I did that to talk to you about Dirac Live and what it does and what it can offer you and how it compares to actual room correction in the form of professional room acoustic treatment. And I often think that audio files just assume that digital room correction and room treatments are at either end of the same stick with, I suppose, the same goal in mind. But I actually don't think that's true at all. I think there is a clear defining difference with room correction or Dirac Live being designed to manage and improve the specific sound of the audio system. Whereas room acoustic treatments are designed to improve the sound of the room or improve the listening conditions with the knock-on effect that an audio system can sound more true. So that is clearly a big difference here. And there is another huge difference in that every audio file can have Dirac Live, but not every audio file can get away with installing acoustic treatments. So I want to look at what are really the differences and what can both of these solutions do for you. My name is Terry Ellis, and full disclosure, I work as a professional Dirac Live calibrator, which means audio files hire me to set up their audio systems that feature Dirac. So you might assume that I am going to be biased towards Dirac, and of course I am, so you can assume that correctly, but not necessarily for the reasons that you might assume. I've been using Dirac myself on my own, or for my own audio systems in my own listening room for a number of years, and used it to improve the sound of all of them. And then working as a professional calibrator, I've used it to improve the sound of well over a hundred different audio file systems now, completely different systems in completely different rooms and in completely different countries. So I'm biased towards Dirac because it's proved itself to me time and time again. But as you see me sitting here in my own personal listening room, you can see behind me there a little bit. I actually have in here 46, I think, different acoustic treatments, professional acoustic treatments, all from GRK Acoustics. And I've had this level of extensive room acoustic treatment in my own listening room for you know, a number more years than I've been using Dirac Live. So I feel like I'm an audiophile with a foot very firmly in both camps here. And I think that makes me the perfect audiophile to talk to you about the differences. And I want to start by talking to you about professional acoustic treatments because I've always thought and I still think that they are the best audio upgrade that you can ever do because if you can improve your listening conditions, if you can improve your listening room, well then the knock-on effects are that every single listening session that you have in that room will be much more enjoyable for you. And in large part of that it will be because those listening sessions will be much less work. And what I mean by that is, I'm sure most audiophiles know these days that the sound that we hear from audio systems is a mixture or a combination of direct sound, which is the sound that is played straight out of the speakers, straight to our ears. And that is combined with reflected sound. And that is a result of speakers you know, spreading their sound. If we think about bass, speakers spread that 360 degrees. So the sound comes direct to our ears, but it also reflects around the room. It hits the walls, it hits the ceiling, it hits the floor. It might hit other hard surfaces that you have in the room. And it arrives to our ears late. And it arrives late purely because the sound has traveled a further distance. And our brain has to try and compute and work out the difference between the direct sound that we are supposed to hear and the reflected late sound that we really are not supposed to hear. And the brain does a fantastic job of you know, computing the difference, but it's not perfect, of course. It can't compute everything. And the whole time it's computing that, obviously, there's a lot of work going on. And I think a great example of this would be maybe listening to some heavy rock music or maybe listening to some big orchestral classical music at quite loud volumes in just like a normal, you know, modern, sparse or uh, 
clean living, domestic room. And you can listen to that music within a very short period of time. The music can be very tiring, it can be, be very hard on you, and it can actually be not enjoyable to listen to at all. And what's actually happening in this instance is the sound energy created by the speakers is taking a long time to dissipate or reduce in energy. And if you think of complex music, rock music as an example, it can be constant energy from the speakers at all frequencies, and that energy has to go somewhere. And I think through the transition of that reflected energy, making its way around the room, hitting services, and changing directions, and I think just through air, you know, as, as the sound waves move through it, the air molecules, there's some resistance there, that sound energy will dissipate, of course, it will reduce in volume, but it can take quite a long time to do so. And of course, that's not ideal for high-end audio because we don't we don't want to be hearing the last note or the echo or the you know delayed sound of the last note when we're supposed to be hearing the direct sound of the next note. We want to always only really be hearing that next note, we don't want to be hearing any of the last note still lingering in the room. I hope that makes some sense. And adding acoustic treatments to a room, such as absorption, will help to improve this situation massively because the use of materials like insulation or foam turns the sound, we really don't want to be hearing the reflected sound into heat. So the sound chaos that is happening in the listening room is starting to be brought much more under control. And the knock-on effect of doing this means that you can much more clearly hear defined layering in music. So improved sound stage. You can hear much more clearly timbre and tone. So music will sound generally more richer and therefore more pleasing. And you can listen to very complex music at much louder volumes without suffering any listening fatigue. Now, one of the main resistances to acoustic treatments that audio files have, I think, is that they feel they don't need them because they have soft furnishings in their room, maybe rugs or carpets or cushions or maybe plants and bookshelves. But let me, I suppose, go on record and say now that none of those things are the same as acoustic treatments, not even close. And I will explain that shortly. I think one of the other major resistances to acoustic treatments is that audio files are scared to kill the sound of their room. And you know, killing the sound of the room is the biggest kind of scaremongering phrase I think that exists in audio and let's just flip this situation around for a second if your room has its own sound and you're listening to a piece of music that's been recorded in some I don't know, concert hall or symphony hall or similar why would you ever want to hear the sound of your room being added to the sound of that concert hall you wouldn't would you it's totally you know backwards thinking to think that would be a good thing so killing the sound of your own room could be seen as more of a positive thing than a negative Thing. But I think the main resistance to acoustic treatments for audiophiles is just their physical size and how that impacts on their listening room, both visually and for space. And of course, you know, I massively understand that one. But here is the interesting thing. All three of these resistances are interlinked. And the reason I would always recommend investing in professional acoustic treatments like from GIK is because they are lab tested. So you know what you are getting and their products are generally designed to be broadband. And that means they are effective at a wide range of frequencies. And this is often why they are so deep or thick or large, because that is what is required to be broadband and extend their effectiveness. And the reason why this is so important is because as we are managing the sound, as we are controlling this reflected energy in the room, professional acoustic treatments will do so in an even or in a strategic or with a strategic approach. So that means as we kind of control, as we bring down this chaos, this excess energy, it's done so in a way that keeps the room sounding correct. It keeps it sounding even. And I think that's really interesting because I think back in the day, there used to be a thing where people would put audio files, I assume, would put those kind of foamy egg cartons all over the walls. And obviously that would have some effect, yeah, some absorptive effect. So it would control some of the reflected energy in the room, but probably because it was very, very thin and very uniform, it would only work controlling the energy in a very limited frequency range, probably high frequencies only. So I would assume a room that's full of, even if these days, if it's full of very thin foam, it would 
just make that room sound very dull and very lifeless for high frequencies because only those frequencies are being absorbed, only those frequencies are being managed and all of the other frequencies are still reflecting around the room and I'm sure that would sound really rather strange and I think that is the situation, that is the epitome or the explanation or the definition of killing the sound of the room. Not the same as applying professional acoustic treatments that work in a strategic broadband fashion. And the reason this is important to consider is because if you are an audiophile who's gone the soft furnishings approach and really loaded your room up with soft furnishings, I still think it's a better approach than no soft furnishings at all, but soft furnishings are only ever going to reduce the reflected energy in a very limited range because they're not broadband designed acoustic treatments. So you might actually be creating a more uneven sounding room without realizing. And of course, the brain can work some of this out and compute out some of these differences, but we know it's not perfect. And the reason we know it's not perfect is because you can go to a hi-fi dealers, listen to a hi-fi system that you're interested in, take that hi-fi system home, and it will sound completely different in your own listening room. And if the brain was perfect at computing all of these acoustical differences, that hi-fi system would sound identical. And just one more quick point on this topic is that you really don't need a lot of acoustic treatments in a listening room to hear a difference. In fact, just a couple of good quality panels placed strategically will make a very big audible difference. But if you actually want to make a substantial difference, a really big difference to your listening room, well then that normally will take a very comprehensive acoustical approach. And the reason this is important is because if you see anybody say that they've maybe added one or two panels to their room, very thin panels, maybe just a couple of diffusion, thin diffusion panels, maybe behind the speakers or something, and they say that their acoustical problems have gone away, well, then they're misleading you because I have, as I mentioned, at least 46 professional acoustic treatments in here, a mixture of diffusion and absorption, thick, thick absorption. And yeah, my acoustical situation here is, you know, night and day better than it would be without the panels, but it's not perfect. You know, my acoustical situation, this room does not sound perfect. So I am very much speaking from experience here. So I want to close out this section of the video by just reiterating what I said at the start in that I do think that adding professional acoustic treatments to your listening room will be the best audio upgrade that you ever that you ever do. Improving your listening conditions will be the best upgrade you can ever do. However, I also fully appreciate not every audio file is able to do it for any number of reasons. And it also doesn't guarantee that you will get better sound because if you have a bad sounding hi-fi system, if that exists anymore, or if maybe you just have a very badly set up hi-fi or audio system, having a room that gives you more of the truth of that audio system just means you're going to hear more of the fact that it maybe is set up badly. And that's definitely not a negative because if you can hear it, you can fix it, you can do something about it. But that leads me nicely, really nicely actually, onto talking about Dirac Live because it really is something very different. I have been a regular and avid user of Dirac Live since 2017, so five or more years now. But before that, I was already big into acoustics and other DSP solutions. And Dirac Live came about as a result of a university project, I think back in the late 90s, and then became a commercial product, I think in about 2001. So its core technologies have actually been around for a long time. But what we see today in 2022 is really just the modern interface and then the integration of Dirac into products like these, these RCAM and NAD streaming amplifiers. To explain what Dirac allows you to do in simple terms, it allows you to sit and see the behavior of your speakers in your listening room. But more important than that, I think it allows you to sit and control the total sound balance of the audio system. So you can control and, and, and tailor and tune the, the deepest bass 
all the way up to treble beyond beyond what most of us can still hear with a real fine level of control. And so an example of what you could do with Dirac, it could be that you could try and set your speakers to follow the exact intended manufacturer's design. If you have that information, you could use Dirac to get you much, much closer to that than you'll ever get any other way. Or I think a better use of it is to subjectively tune the sound. So you could use it to maybe make the vocals sound more full and rich and bold and pleasing. Or maybe go the other way with the vocals. You could use it to or control maybe the air region of the treble and add more airiness to the sound of a hi-fi system to make it all sound a little bit more spacious and interesting. Vice versa, you might have some speakers that sound just a little bit scratchy or maybe a little bit bright or maybe have a little bit of that Bowers and Wilkins treble that some people complain about. Well, you can just tune that ever so slightly if you want to or a lot if you want to and just take away that edginess for a much more smoother, more pleasing overall sound. And this is the bit I love the most. You can simultaneously manage your excess bass, your bass peaks. You can bring those down, you can make the bass nulls much less obvious, and you can actually feel some of the ah, negative parts of the bass that you have in your room, all while, if you want to, having more bass, more bass impact, or less bass and less bass impact. Total control of the full frequency band, total control of the balance within the system, with the only real limitation being what the system can deliver, yeah? And you can always push the system around quite a bit, but obviously, depending on the system quality, will be a limit that you can hit and achieve. But you'll be surprised for what you can achieve. I amaze myself sometimes with what I achieve for people and just how good some speakers and amplifiers and systems really are when you can control their sound in the room. And on that note, if you understand the effects of frequency response and how that makes us perceive sound, well, then you can really do a hell of a lot of things in terms of... Yeah, tune in the sound to how you like it. And that is the big thing for me with Dirac. It's, it puts you in control. That means you're always tuning the sound of this audio system to your specific taste in your listening room. Really, really, really useful and powerful tool. And then happening behind the scenes is something that you cannot adjust. Dirac also improves the impulse response of the system in the room. And the impulse response is how quickly the speaker creates its sound and then how fast the sound stabilizes in the room with every reflection causing instability in the impulse response. So by Dirac improving the impulse response in the room, it's also helping with our reflectivity problem that we spoke about earlier in the video. And that bit absolutely amazes me because I have absolutely no idea how it does that, but it does, it's improving the impulse response. And the knock-on audible effect of that will be improved clarity, improved timing, and improved sound stage. So Dirac is a tool that gives us the user total control over the sound balance of the system. Think how important that is. And also it gives us better timing, better clarity, and better sound stage, all from a software, all from without doing anything, without changing anything, without moving anything, all just from software. And think about that. That's really, really amazing. It's really clever and amazing stuff. And if you own one of the streaming amplifiers like this NAD or this RCAM, well then you get it already built into these products without having to buy anything else, except maybe a better quality measurement microphone because I really don't think the microphones that come with these units are anywhere near good enough. One of the main resistances I see towards Dirac is that audio files say they think it's for home cinema and not for hi-fi. And that one always makes me chuckle because Dirac Live is a tool for getting better audio from an audio system in a room. And that audio system and that room, they don't know whether you're listening to music or, or watching TV or watching a movie. It's all the same. It's just sound and better sound from an audio system will be the better sound for music and movies. You know, it's, it's the exact same thing. And actually, Dirac could be, or oh, really is better suited to two-channel audio than multi-channel audio, really. And that is because as humans, we are much more, much less fussy or much more fussy of a, the quality of a sound source when there are less sound sources. So listen to two speakers, we would be much more fussy of that sound than listening to 14 speakers as part of a large home cinema system. So being able to control and manage and get better sound from those two sound sources, we're going to appreciate that a lot more than get, getting better sound from, say, 14 speakers. One of the other resistances I see to Dirac is that people say that, well, it's not just Dirac, actually, it's DSP. People say that it only works in a limited area, and that's then a negative effect. But 
If you actually walk around a listening room, the sound will change drastically depending on where you stand in the listening room for most speakers. So it's not the fact that you're engaging Dirac or a DSP solution that's kind of focusing the sound in an area. The sound will always be better in an area. And there's a big distinct advantage to having one really good sounding area, because it just so happens that's the area that you sit in and listen in. So the fact that the sound changes around the room because you've engaged DSP, that's totally misleading because that sound, because that is happening to the sound anyway. And the last big resistance that I see is that people say it's not for them. It's a solution that they've tried and it's just not for them. And that is generally the customer of mine. The people that I go and see that have tried Dirac and haven't been able to get the results they're looking for, quite often they turn it off. Once you show them how to use it and show them what it can be done with it, they are amazed by it. So it's big resistance, I think, is the fact that it is a tool and that it does require really some experience and knowledge to achieve the best from it. And that is something that makes it stand out to me as a solution. And the reason it stands out to me is because it puts you, the user, in control. And think about this situation. How can anybody write a computer algorithm that's going to know what sound you like? What's going to sound, that's going to know the type of sound that you want on that day? Maybe you change your mind from last week to the next. How can anybody write an algorithm to do that? They can't. Whereas if they give you the tools to tailor and tune and control the sound to be exactly how you want it to be, well then that's as good as we need. That's exactly what we do need, but it just means some experience and knowledge of how to use this is obviously going to get you better results than if you don't know what you're doing. And of course, Dirac is not able to make your 100 pound speakers sound like 100,000 pound Wilson audios. And it can't make your solid state amplifier sound like a really tubey tube amplifier from 1950 or something like that. It's not designed to do that. It's just designed to help you manage and get better sound from your specific system. So that means that your amplifiers, your speakers, your DAC, and everything else within the hi-fi chain is still really important because you're still going to hear the main characters of all of those components and the system synergies and everything that makes up a hi-fi system, which actually is really good when you think about it. It's really good. But being able to manage the sound of that whole synergy <laughs> is even better. So this has been a really long video packed with information. Let's just try and conclude things. I genuinely think that why would you not use both solutions if you can? Why would you not get the best of both of the solutions that we've talked about in this video and use them together? Because that would be really having your cake and eating it. I genuinely think if you can add room acoustic, professional acoustic treatments to your listening room, it will be the best audio upgrade that you can ever do because it's just making that listening environment that much better for everything that you do in there, literally everything that you do in that room. However, I fully appreciate that it's not even necessarily just being able to have acoustic treatments in the listening room. It's like quite an extreme thing to do. Yeah, it's like like a 1% a, a thing to do to make a room fully dedicated to audio and then put acoustic treatments everywhere. It's quite an extreme thing to have in a home. But <laughs> and I don't say that in a bad way because obviously I've got it myself, but it does take quite an extreme audio file. It does take a very, very, very serious audio file to even want to do that. But it's worth it. It's 100% worth it. Whereas, like I said, everybody on anybody can have Dirac Live. Anybody can have a digital room correction system. You don't need to be a really extreme, crazy, passionate audiophile to want to have Dirac Live. You maybe just want an audio system at home that sounds really good. And maybe it's in a room that's not designed for audio. It's not even really taking audio fully into mind, but yet you still want really good sound. You still want to really enjoy movies and music. And that's where Dirac really does pay dividends. But if you can't have both, which one will you go with? Let me know down below in the comments section. I hope you found this video really interesting. I hope you found it useful. And if you have enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, if you'd like to see a review comparison of these two streaming amplifiers, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Obviously all the way to the end of this very long video and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye.